Hi everyone, this video will show you how to troubleshoot CPU problems with the Dantrace monitoring solution. Lab software stack for today, cloud native platform we're using Red Hat OpenShift version 3.11, the Java version will be open to 12, 64 bit. Of course, the application development platform will be Spring Boot 2.1.16 with the Eclipse ID. And the monitoring tool, as I mentioned earlier, will be Dana Trace, the SaaS offering, which we'll be using to monitor, let's say, host container, mostly application and services, which also provide code level and advanced troubleshooting capabilities. Okay, now let's start with the uh, the small microservice that we created. We called it CPU controller. Very simple microservice. But this one has a single method, uh, which is called user data, essentially listening on slash CPU. And, and the only thing that this microservice has done is interesting. First, it will actually spin on the CPU for the specified number of uh, iterations. And of course, it will also allocate one meg of memory on heap per iteration. And again, the goal is to give us simulation to simulate, let's say, a, a real microservice that will let's say, generate excessive CPU as an example. And it could be also a, a microservice that will consume or fetch, uh, let's say, some sort of data like a payload, for example. So with that's why we're simulating an, an allocation actually of memory of one megabyte here. So we're essentially creating a new binary. Okay, so that, that's what the microservice does in Spring Boot. And as I said, we're going to deploy uh, this microservice in OpenShift. So now let's have a look at the OpenShift runtime environment. Okay, so we have, so you can see right now, I'm actually logging into the terminal of one pod. We have a single pod right now running which is hosting this uh, Spring Boot microservice. So you can see in the typical OpenShift, uh, we can monitor the base uh, KPIs like memory and cores, for example, of your microservice. So we're going to start quickly with the traditional way first of how you would troubleshoot CPU issue. And then I'm going to show you the uh, uh, what's going on when, uh, when you use the Dynatrace uh, APM tool. Now let's go back to the terminal. So in this case, I'm going to show you our running microservice. Okay, package inside the Java file, GDK12. Okay, so you can see right now the Java process, which is the PID227, is it's not using any uh, any CPU uh, at, at the moment. So what we're going to do is start to initiate our microservice. Okay, remember it was listening on CPU. By default, it does a single spin. So by default, the, the execution will be uh, rather quick. Then we're going to initiate it with a spin with a little more iteration let's say 20,000. And now we'll start to see CPU starting to go up at the OpenShift level. So that's what we can do. Here we can initiate a little more spin here, just a couple more requests. And then you will see the actual process start to kick in, right? So you see now CPU were roughly consuming, uh, but it's still rather quick. As you can see, it's 20,000 iteration. So we're just going to uh, exercise it. Now we're going to give it more spin. Let's say 200,000 spin, a few more requests. Let's see one more, one more. And now you should start to see more CPU going in. Okay, so you see now we're using more cores. So we're at about two cores, two point so. So and of course it's obviously you can always matter with a terminal. Um, but of course when you look at it from a OpenShift point of view, OpenShift will also give you the number of uh, CPU cores available. Like in our case, we have about three gigs set up for this pod, which is roughly six cores max that we could exercise. And so you can really monitor and you can see in this case, CPU start to go up. Now traditional way of CPU when you see problem like this you will you you can hit the shift and H key and that will show you the thread view right because in Linux uh, any uh, each Java thread is a actually process so you can actually see your top consumer thread in action so interestingly right we're seeing actually our request that we just issued right through curl so we're seeing these threads spinning and we're seeing also uh, garbage collection threads firing up which is not again not a surprise given remember we had a one meg of pillows of course each iteration will assign one megabyte of memory so where that's why it's adding some pressure also on the garbage collection so as you can see that's a traditional way as as you would troubleshoot you say hey here's working on and then you know there's there's more requests coming in and you see now the program is stopped so typically let, let me send a few more requests let's say three more so i was mentioning traditionally what you would troubleshoot this and then you could also run a g stack right if i switch over process 227 you can also run a g stack over the process you can say hey what's going on with my threads 
and then you can investigate as you can see garbage collection trades that was throwing up and then you can look at what the trades is doing and again no surprise here on the stack you will see the offending trades are actually our microservice code line 36 which we're seeing actually spinning which is again same piece of code i was showing you where we actually have a initiated spin along with memory allocation okay so that's a typical traditional way as you would troubleshooting uh these typical type of problems okay in the open shift ecosystem of course you can always fall back on the uh, default and of course there's other monitoring tool that you can use in open shift natively like uh, jalokia and, and a couple of others so that'll be the standard way now let's see now what we did um for the open shift and i will show what we did here now we did uh, configure it with a dynatrace agent so we're using the dynatrace also sas trial version to monitor and now the the dynatrace uh, monitoring tool people are familiar with is it's quite advanced piece of mi monitoring and and it does uh, it is fully support also for the open shift ecosystem okay so the and so that's the online documentation uh which you can also review on your side but essentially there's kind of a two modes uh for open shift that you can use you have the uh, kind of a, a mode which is full stack view monitoring there's also the application only monitoring which is what we're using today full stack is for example if you set up your own uh, open shift on-prem for example you could monitor everything from even the open shift uh, bare host kubernetes and all the good stuff up to your application basically you install the agent Lower, lower level on our side though we're using trial version and we're you know we're deploying at the container level okay so in this case we're using the application only monitoring which is essentially monitor pretty much everything that we care about which is at the application layer including the uh, kpis at the uh, at the host still but still in the context of a container so essentially what we did is only to install so basically the we have a, we have an environment variable on the container boot up called LD preload. We specify the location again of the Dana Trace one agent that we're using. And basically when the container is booting up, every time you're booting up the container, the agent will uh, auto de deploy. And the good thing with Dana Trace is that's pretty much the only thing you have to do. Uh, there's no other config. I don't need to map to map it to the Java or anything. Okay, so it's pretty straightforward. So now I'm, I'm switching back to my Dana Trace console here. So as you can see, it auto detect your containers, right? That one is a previous container, and that one is my latest con container. So you see, it will auto detect based on any of the container. If you look at the OpenShift, the pod I was using here, it's pretty much the same match that we're seeing here. So that trace will auto detect the container virtualization, which is some of the you know, uh, Amazon stuff, which is used for the core infrastructure. And then of course, Linux so it will detect the base KPI automatically. Now, once it detects, it's detecting the um, the container, then it will show you whatever it's detecting inside the environment, which is quite practical, right? Detecting name, the one agent I was mentioning, it's using the Java in this case, uh, cloud is EC2 type, data center, and of course, logical cores that we have in this case, uh, OpenShift and the memory limit here, which is a, a three gig. We're using it for troubleshooting on a CPU level. So of course you can always look at it from a host perspective, right? You could see that. Um, so now I'm going to generate more CPU load and we'll see what's happening with Dynatrace. So now we'll be using the Dynatrace we are troubleshooting that issue. So going back, we're, we're seeing now our requests are pretty much uh, completed. So I'm just going to initiate more spinning, few more requests. Each one will spin for a number of time. Right, so CPU will start to go up, and of course, eventually, at some point, that trace will, will refresh the actual usage of the CPU there, and you're able to monitor to say, hey, I have some potential offending processes. So you see here, I have two Java pro processes, kind of a one main one, but the one that we care about for a micro is this one, which is for our performance simulator. Now, that trace will detect Apache Tomcat for Spring Boot because it's um, Tomcat embedded. That's why you're seeing the Apache Tomcat here. And then it's able to get quite a bit of details. So you see at the single process level, it's detecting two things. First, it will detect the CPU usage, which we're seeing now is getting quite high. And then it will give you also a breakdown of the uh, of the GVM metrics. So you already know you have suspension time. So remember, we're seeing garbage collection firing up. Suspension time is going up now. It's almost 6%. You can see that even higher than, than that from the previous run. That will give you actually all the full history of the JVM, which typically you would need to get, let's say, with Jalokia right now. So that one is quite practical because it will auto detect your microservice running and automatically start to collect detail on the JVM, including some of the app server metric here. To troubleshoot the CPU problem, there's a there's a couple of things that you can do. In this case, you see it's detecting a single service CPU controller that is able to detect. 
So you can also see that from the transaction and, and services as well. Now for the CPU troubleshooting, one of the good thing with Manage is the, it's really able to get the, the full view so you can really go back in time. So you see that's my previous run I was running. So it's it, it's actually breaking down the CPU between garbage collection and and the actual web service request itself. So remember in OpenShift, typically traditional way, you can always use some scripting or some command, and then you need to manually figure out, hey, I, I need that much CPU for my garbage collection, then you need to see at a thread level. In this case, the address will give us out of the box, the breakdown uh, you know, on the type, and we know we had garbage collection. And after you get that breakdown, you can go on the more and say, hey, okay, what's, that's fine. I know which service now is consuming, but well, why? Why is that? Okay. So previously we had to do a G stack, and then you had to analyze the uh, stack tray, which is still quite powerful way, by the way, to to troubleshoot. But in, in this case, what's interesting is in the address we'll shoot a meta the hotspot, which shows you hey it's 100% code execution, and then you can select the hotspot, and then the hotspot will show you out of the box the actual meta level, the top contributors. So you know right away that piece is running and that's precisely the, the actual method that we had, right? So so it's able to, to give you the detail uh, out of the box by looking at the method hotspot because the agent will inject uh, also at the uh, at the core process as a bit of a bytecode injection. So in this case, it was able to quickly identify, hey, you have a, a wrong method and the overall contribution was 99.9%. .9%, so it's pretty obvious uh, of the culprit. Traditional way you have to profile it, like, as I mentioned, to identify it. So you see it, it's giving me that out of the box after having the discovery of the of the process. Okay, so it's uh, so that's one way to troubleshoot the issue, as I mentioned. So you can uh, split it. There's also a diagnostic tool sections. You could look at your top CPU analysis contributors. That one is useful. Let's say once you have to have many many services. Uh, let's say you have many many microservices in your environment. So in this case, Entry is managed can show the top contributors um, as well of the CPU. Okay, so other other than that, like I said when you do that type of troubleshooting uh, you can start at the you can pick up let's say a, a container and then uh, pick up the process and drill down from there of course another session we can showcase a bit of a machine learning going on inside the tool but today i just wanted to highlight you i can troubleshoot cpu problems with the untrace manage as you can see code level view fairly straightforward pretty quick to get to the data uh, quickly so i hope you enjoy it and uh, let me know if you have any questions thank you